Now, our enhancements are based on user in input, especially number four, and that's the inclusion of a catalog window into ArcMap. As John said, now you don't have to open up two different applications to work with your data that's associated with your map. We can all do it in one interface. If you find a layer that you're interested in, like the states here, I can view the item description and the metadata about this feature. Or I'm looking for geology information, and here's a layer. I see the thumbnail. That's the, the data I'm interested in, so I'll drag and drop it into my map. Because the catalog is tightly coupled with a map, I can interface with my data by creating new geodatabases, new features, adding new attributes to features I'm currently using. There's a lot of ability and capability here. Adding catalog will definitely improve your productivity. Now, number three on our list is geoprocessing and model builder. And I have a lot to talk about with geoprocessing and model builder. So let's change our view here a little bit to the Half Dome hiking area. Now, we saw how search and rescue activities uh, with John's presentation before lunch. I'm going to focus on one lost hiker. Because if you have a hiker who's lost, let's say in the Red Bullseye area, you, you want to have a model that helps you predict where is the best location to look for the hiker considering the slope and the time. Well, I can go back to catalog in my project window, and we'll open up the search and rescue model in Model Builder. New in Model Builder is a tooltip. So you can now see the input and the output features and the parameters for every tool without having to open the tools individually. If you work with your model like I do, and you move items and features around, and you realize it was better, I should have left it where it was, then now you can use the undo button. Undo and the redo button are going to be great. In fact, sometimes I delete a tool, and then I realize I need that tool to run the model so I can undo. This is definitely going to improve your modeling experience. Also um, as part of the geoprocessing is there your request to include tools and models in a toolbar. So we've enhanced the customized dialog, where we can include tools. For instance, I'm going to bring the erase tool up to a custom toolbar. Or I'm going to bring uh, the model we were just looking at, the search and rescue model, up to the same toolbar. You can dock them on a, a standard toolbar if you'd like. Let's run the search and rescue model. Now, previously, when we've had to run these models, we've had to wait until the map, I mean, the, the model completes before we work with the map. Now, with the ba background processing for ge geoprocessing, background geoprocessing is what I meant to say, now with the background geoprocessing, you can run the model, you see the status in the bottom right, and a pop-up window will appear when the model is complete. So I can move on to number two without further delay. In number two, we're going to talk about time. And when we talk about time, I'm thinking about time-enabled features. So here I have the fire history for the past 20 years in the Yosemite National Park. As I move my icon around the map, we see the years and additional information. So just a side note that the map tip includes a complex expression now, so you can have multiple fields, so you get more information from your map tip. So if I want to look at this information through time, I need to create a time-enabled layer. And to do so, I just open up the layer properties, access the new time tab, and enable this time. This is a time layer, and include the parameters I need. We'll do the same for this fire ignition points by year. Once I have the, both of those time layers, I can use my t slider window and look at any point in time. Now I'm looking at 12 months in history for the past 12 months. And we can move through each year and see the distribution of fire and ignition points. So ArcGIS 10 is becoming time enabled. Now we're on to number one on our list. And this is fast base maps. So to look at the fast base maps, I want to move to my geology layer we were looking at previously. 
Because to best understand fast vapes mats, we need to see before and after. So currently, as I pan in my map, you see a large white space. When I release my mass wheel, the features will draw in sequential order. Well, if I create a new base map layer that's available, and I add to the new base map layer all the features that I'm interested in, including in the base map layer. Now, this new base map layer is a group layer. It's a new type of group layer that pre-caches your data to allow you to have the fast base map experience. And so that's what it's doing right now. It's pre-caching the data. And once it's done, I can start panning in my map and have a continuous mapping experience. Or we can roam by pressing the Q key and truly understand what it means to have fast base maps. Now, that is the end of the top 10 list, but Damien wasn't up here because he knows I want to share one more item with a group. It's okay, you can come up. <laughs> and I want to share one more item with a group. And that's the fact that everything that I'm doing now and what I've shown you today is on a license that I have checked out from the license server. This is a license checked out or borrowed. So I can now work in the field or when I'm on a trip without being connected to the license server. That's also been requested a lot. In addition to that, I could also use, the, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And if you like that, you'll even like this better. There's an ArcInfo single-use license at RTS 10. 